Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jackie and I'm here to help you pass your U.S. naturalization interview. Filling out the application is the first big step in starting your naturalization interview. However, there's still some work you need to do after you submitted your N-400 application. So today I'll go over five things you should do after you've submitted your application. First, keep a copy of your N-400 application. You might ask, why should I keep a copy of my application? Well, your naturalization interview will not be scheduled right away. It's usually scheduled between three to nine months after submitting your application. However, some applicants have waited up to one and a half years. So if your memory is like mine, most likely you won't remember what you filled out. During your naturalization interview, the officer will go through the N-400 application with you, and it's important that you're familiar with what you filled out. For online applicants, I received feedback from applicants that glitches in the system sometimes caused missed answers or incorrect answers. So you'll want to make sure to review it. After you submitted your application, wait for a few days and your application will be available under the document tab. If you filed by mail, make sure you make a copy of the application before you mail it, especially if you ask someone to help fill out the form for you. Second, keep track of any changes to your N-400 application. From the date you've submitted your N-400 application to the date you have your interview, there might be some changes in your life, such as a change of marital status, change of job, change of address, traveling abroad maybe, new traffic tickets, let's hope not. But you need to update the officers of these changes during the naturalization interview and the oath ceremony. A common question I've seen is whether you can travel overseas after you submitted your N-400 application. You can travel abroad after you submitted your application and before your oath ceremony, as long as you still meet the continuous residence and physical presence requirements. If you're not familiar with that, I'll add a link in our description. And for those of you who've applied through marriage-based, you have to be married and live with your U.S. citizen spouse until the oath ceremony in order to be eligible under the three-year rule. Third, check your USCIS online account on a regular basis. Usually, USCIS will send you a notice about a month before your interview. Unfortunately, our postal service is not too reliable from time to time. So make sure to have an online account set up, even if you've applied by mail. Check the document tab on a regular basis because the same letter will show up on that tab. This is important, especially if you're traveling abroad while you're waiting for your interview. And make sure to secure your connection while you're accessing your account by using a VPN. However, not all VPN services are created equal. I've used a few of them and I have to say Surfshark is the best deal. Not only is it one of the top VPNs ranked by CNET in 2022, it's also the cheapest. One of the best features that separates Surfshark from its competitors is you can have unlimited devices connected without any data cap. Privacy tools such as ad blocking, anti-tracking, and kill switch are available to all users. And if you sign up for Surfshark 1, you'll receive additional features such as Surfshark Search, a private search tool, and Surfshark Alert, an ID protection that will notify you if your password or email address appears in the dark web. So if you want to give Surfshark a try, I have a special promotion just for you. Use the link in the description to sign up and enter my promo code Jackie Citizen, and you will receive 83% off and three extra months for free. So what are you waiting for? Surfshark even offers a 30 day money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose, so give it a try. Okay, 
Now let's go over two more things you should do after you submitted your N-400 application. Number four, study, study, study. First, you need to understand the interview format. The interview consists of four main parts to test your U.S. civics knowledge, test your ability to read and write English, test your ability to speak and understand English, and confirm your application is accurate and up to date. Let's go over them quickly. First, test your U.S. civics knowledge. I see a lot of applicants asking which version of the test they should take. As of now, everyone has to take the 2008 version of the civics test. So there are 100 civics questions you need to study. During the interview, the officer will ask you up to 10 questions and you have to get six of them correct to pass this portion of the interview. These are not multiple choice questions and will only be asked orally like this. Second, test your ability to read and write English. During the interview, the officer will provide you up to three English sentences to read and up to three English sentences to write. These sentences are based on a set of vocabulary provided by USCIS. You have to write one sentence correctly and read one sentence correctly out loud to pass this portion of the interview. Both tests will be conducted on a tablet. So you have to read a sentence on the tablet and then write a sentence on the tablet using a stylus pen. Third, to test your ability to speak and understand English. Unless you meet the English exemption requirements, which require you to be older than a certain age and be a green card holder for a certain amount of time, you must have the interview in English without an interpreter. The officer will test your ability by having small talk with you or asking you questions related to the N-400 application. Some might even ask you to explain some vocabulary on the application. Number four, Confirm your application is accurate and up-to-date. A large part of the naturalization interview involves reviewing the N-400 form. The officer will ask you questions to verify the answers you provided on the application and to determine your eligibility for naturalization. That's why it's so important to have a copy of your submitted application and review it before you interview. I've made a lot of videos on my channel that go over each part of the interview and some mock interviews based on actual applicants experiences. So if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a good time to do it. And I truly enjoy the opportunity to guide you through this special journey. For those of you who need a little extra help, we also offer live mock interviews on our website. During your live mock interview, we will go over the application with you just like the real interview and provide feedback and suggestions to make sure you are fully prepared for this important moment. I'll add a link in the description. Number five, renew your expired green card. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes it takes a while to schedule your naturalization interview. During the wait, your green card might expire well, first, an expired green card does not change your status as a legal permanent resident. However, having an expired green card might cause some issues for you. For example, if you travel abroad with an expired green card, you might not be able to re-enter the U.S. You don't want that. You can renew your green card while you are waiting for your naturalization interview. However, that costs money and takes time. You can actually request an I-551 temporary evidence stamp. You need to contact USCIS and request an info pass appointment. The I-551 stamp is typically valid for six months, up to a year, and you can use that to travel abroad while you're waiting for your naturalization interview. However, if you lose your green card, you have to submit the I-90 for a replacement card. All right. That's all I have for you today. I know that was a lot, but I hope this helps you and good luck with your immigration journey. If you need further help, check out these videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.